So today's question is, what is a sadomasochistic, sadomasochistic personality? Mm-hmm. Well, when you hear the word sadomasochism, you immediately start to think of Fifty Shades of Grey, don't you? But what is it, and why is it so taboo in polite society? Well, I mean, obviously everything with with, with something like this, you know, there's... Yeah. You're going to find Freud involved, but Freud didn't actually come up with the name, although he certainly enjoyed talking about it. The name was coined by a German psychiatrist called Baron Richard von Kraft Ebbing. Now, actually, von Kraft Ebbing is responsible for many words today that describe sexuality. His book, um, Sexual Psychopathy, a Clinical Forensic Study, uh, introduced many words into the English language, such as, you know, sadist, after the Marquis de Sade uh, masochist, after Leopold von Sacher Masoch. Um, he also is responsible for phrases like homosexuality, bisexuality, and even necrophilia. But sadomasochism means taking pleasure in both experiencing as well as inflicting pain and humiliation. Now, most often it's an, it's an enhancement to bedroom activity. You know, the, the practice entails consensually enjoying the infliction of pain, either on yourself or on your bedroom partner. Now, whilst uh, being a sadist means enjoying the infliction of pain, and being a masochist means enjoying the reception or the receipt of pain, sadomasochists do enjoy switching roles depending upon, well, I suppose, their mood and the circumstances. Of course, there are a number of psychological explanations for for the occurrence of sadomasochistic personalities and behaviour. For some people, taking on a role of compliance or helplessness um, offers a form, I suppose, of therapeutic escape from the stresses of normal life or from responsibility, or even from guilt in some cases. Being under the power of a strong controlling presence may also evoke feelings of safety and protection associated with childhood. At the same time, they might enjoy the feeling of dominant and authority, which comes from playing the dominant role. And one of the main contributing factors to the development of sadomasochism are experiences during early psychosexual development. Childhood, essentially, which is where Freud comes in. Back in the 18th century, the French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau um, now, he's actually incidentally responsible for the phrase let them eat cake as well, rather than Marie Antoinette, who he wrote it in his book, but that's neither here nor there, that's just an aside. He famously noted that he would derive sexual pleasure from receiving childhood beatings from his nannies. Can you imagine? Now, though, sadomasochism uh, is... I suppose, normal in some relations, and it can intensify normal relationships, shall we say. Boundaries can be tested. Um, experiences can be intensified. But most importantly, I suppose, for those with a sadomastic personality, it helps fulfill that desire for an increased attachment to, to a partner. I can't say the idea appeals to me personally. I rather think being walloped like a naughty schoolboy might be a step too far for me. But having said that, I did go to a public boarding school, and they've been named to churn out chaps with exotic tastes, shall we say. The rest, though, I shall leave to your imagination. <laughs> We're going to be banned. <laughs>